Welcome back. Where are you? What country are you in? What city are you in? What continent are you in? Well, that's the world that marketers have to deal with. Here I'm standing in the northern part of San Diego, a major city in the United States, in the state of California, within the United States. And you're probably somewhere else. How did, you, how did we get connected? Someone reached out and found you as a open or interested customer. We had products and services that, that you, we think you might want to buy. And that's what companies are having to do. It used to be that you'd sell products or services to someplace close. And the natural progression is that ultimately over time, the products are pushed out from the manufacturing site. Customers hear about it somehow through communication. They say, I want that. Great. Or how can I get that? And someone provides a service to distribute a product to you. All right? But when you're thinking about global marketing, you can take a look at two things. Is the product an international product or is it a global product? What we mean by that is a global product is that means that it's a product or service that's available, the same product or service available everywhere. Much like Gillette razors. They don't change by the country they're in. Uh, Coca-Cola. Well, there are some slight changes. It's basically the same product everywhere. Um, uh, automobiles. Those are considered actually international products because the car is basically the same, but there are some significant changes. If, you, if an American company makes a car and ships it to England, Japan, Australia, and other countries, there's the steering wheel, instead of being on the left side of the car, is on the right. So they have to make a major shift so they can move the product to the other side, the, the, the steering wheel, but also they've adapted the car to that market. Not only do they do that, but they have to adapt to different regulations for uh, pollution regulations, uh, coming, a car that's made in uh, another part of the United States, shipped to California, has to have special emission controls. Okay? Same thing going to other countries. Some countries don't have such strong controls, and they have, coming to the states, they have to have that adapted. So when you're thinking about may having a, a global product versus a local, an international product, it's how will, if you don't change it, will you not get into the market? Certainly some people in England w would buy an American car with a wheel on the left, just as we buy cars in the United States from England that have the steering wheel on the right. But they know that they can increase sales if they, may, if they localize the product. So what you ultimately want to do in most cases is localize the product or service and localize the promotion. Now, so, and the reason you do that is to adapt to the different buying habits. So if the, if the buyers will buy your product without any changes, keep it that way. But if, they, if you can increase your sales or get a marketplace by modifying the product or service, that's usually a good idea to do that. Okay, air travel, for example, that doesn't change a whole lot around the world. It's basically all the same. But uh, food products, they definitely do. Certain parts of the world, especially around the equator, have spicier food than as you move north and south. So companies have to adapt their products to those markets. And they do, significantly. Okay. Now, one of the things in thinking about global marketing, it's costly. It's time consuming. Because if I'm in San Diego and I want to sell a product or service someplace else, let's say in uh, Latin America, typically I have to travel down there. That takes time, that takes money, and there are a lot more differences down there because now you have different languages, you have different cultures, different rules and regulations, uh, and that costs money to adapt to because now you have to come back up and say, well, gosh, if we want to sell our product down into Brazil, for example, we have to do these things. Well, those distractions of changing from your core competency, what you've done well by, that now gives you the opportunity to, to expand down into South America may cost you a lot of money. Okay? And that's okay if you can get the sales. But don't forget that, you, that as you go into different markets, different culture, uh, you have to oftentimes adapt your product. McDonald's, 
Pepsi. They all modify their products somewhat as they go into new markets. And there's a cost there. And what you got to watch out for in the distractions is if you go to other countries, your executive group doing that, setting up new markets, may be distracted by, from their keeping their existing core business going. And there are many case studies and examples of companies that have tried to expand internationally or globally that lost their domestic market and because they spent so much time and energy and money developing these other markets that they lost out. So you have to be careful of what I call the, the distraction effect. So you, what you want to do is, when you're looking at going into new markets, look at the what's your competitive advantage. Is it dealing with the product? Is it dealing with the service? Uh, are you, can you dominate the market? Do you have products and, and resources that you use that are unique for this particular market? Okay? But you have to ask where are, the, where are the customers? Where are the people? And this is one thing you want to look at. Let's say now you're, you're trying to sell your product to another organization or another country. I, I always use an example of beer, for example. Uh, when I was, did some consulting in Australia, uh, in Brisbane, there was a beer called 4X that was very good. And they needed to expand out of Australia, and they looked into Asia and they thought, not quite. That didn't fit what they were looking for. But one of the things they looked at, they said, no, who would most likely buy our product? Well, they first looked internal. Who's buying our product in Australia? Well, they, they identified that, and then they also took, took one thing and they said, now, where are we geographically? Because why do you drink beer a lot of times to, to, to quench the thirst? Well, they then said, okay, well, here we are geographically a certain distance from the equator. Well, let's flip it. And now they went up above the, above the equator and took a band around the earth there and said, you know, San Diego, Southern California, Texas might be a great area to sell their beer because it's a similar lifestyle, similar weather, basic, you know, somewhat. And indeed, that's what they did. They didn't go to Asia, they didn't go to Europe, they went to the southwest component of the United States and actually did very well. So don't hesitate to look at your existing customers and ask where do they exist elsewhere or where do those characteristics exist. Now, you have to be aware of economies, you have to be aware of going uh, of the political stability of the country. In fact, the, that, that political stability is the number one factor that people look at or consider uh, to when they're going to go into new markets. So you may go into some markets and not others. The not others are probably unstable markets because what they've what companies have found is if you have political stability, you also have economic and social stability, and that's really what you want to look at. One last thing, beware that companies, when you're going globally, you're going to help uh, consumers leapfrog other products. So they may, so for example, if you are selling laptops to Africa, parts of Africa right now, they don't have to go back to a laptop that was made 20 years ago. They come into the market, they start a new market uh, with the best product right now. So they may leapfrog again all the prior Dell computers and Microsoft iterations, they come in with the very best right now. But your customers that are going international have to have the willingness and ability to buy. And you have to take into consideration the price, the cost, and the cost differentials. Don't forget that you're going into new areas, it's going to cost you more money, but the other markets may be very receptive to you, and that's good. You want to take advantage of that. And you want to be receptive to that, and, but take advantage of what changes are occurring. So when in doubt, go global or go international, but make sure you, you minimize the changes to your products or services only enough to what will get repeat customers. So happy travels.